or in concrete. This is what we're aiming for today. Okay, so we start up by selecting the light and the cube and we press X and then delete them. Then we press Shift A, Mesh, Isosquare. We drag it up, G, Z, and drag it up in Z axis. Then we go to Object, Quick Effect, Quick Liquid. Great. And if you just press Space, we have some kind of liquid. Great. But we want um, this to be much smaller, so we just select it, press S to scale it down. Like that. And what also happened was that it just one blob of liquid that fall. So we need to change this. So we go over to the physics tab and instead of geometry here, we change this to inflow. So if you just try this again, and before we try it, let's just change this to the end to 100. And we can select the domain and change this animation also to end at 100. Like that, and if we try it now, you just need to restart, and it pours. So we want it to work like that. Great. And right now it's just like water, and we don't want that. We want this to be concrete, so we need to change some stuff. So uh, first off, we can scroll up, and we can change the resolution to 64. Uh, for water, you want this value to be higher, but for this concrete pour, this will do just fine. And then we want to activate diffusion and we want to get some surface tension and we can set this to 0 0.08. And we also want to activate high viscosity solver. So we check that and change this to 0 0.01. And then we want to work with a cache. And you want to save your cache somewhere suitable for this. And then you just press is resumable. And the type I want to go with all for this. And then we just bake it. And when it bakes, it's kind of doing the animation. So you will be able to see the animation smoothly later. And you can also scroll through um, your animation back and forth. And we can stop the animation by pressing X. Because I realized that this will just continue to flow. And I don't want that. We go to frame 1. We select the isosphere up here, I think it's easiest. And we go with the inflow from frame 1, so we just press I. And then when we come to frame 50, we change this to geometry. And we press I. And now we just pour onto frame 50, and we stop with the pouring. Okay, so let's redo this. Let's select it in main. And we can resume uh, to bake the simulation. And it was only on 45, so this will work fine. But the animation is done, so now we can just scroll through it. Great. Uh, and if you now set up the camera by pressing Ctrl, Alt, 0. And press F12 to render. It's just a gray blob, so we need to change this. First off, I want to set up the environment. So we go to World, we go to Color, Environment Texture. And then I want to add an HDR. And to get good HDR, I recommend that you go to Polyhaven. And so this is free, and I think this will look good. Uh, hangar indoor. So you just download it in 4K, should be enough. And then you load it. Great. And if you now go to the viewport shading, it looks like water, and we can see the background. We don't want that. So we go down to film and transparent. So this water blob. We want to change the material of this one. We go to material settings and we can just press the minus to take that away and press new for a new material. Then we can just go to this corner and drag down. We can drag this up. And, and I like to do this instead of going to the shading um, tab because I have the timeline here as well and I want to use that. So let's just choose shader editor and we press new. So now we have some kind of white material. We want this to be concrete. So uh, first off, we want to make sure that we have a Node Wrangler activated. So we go to Edit, Preferences, and we go to Add-ons, and we search for Node Wrangler. Great. Check that box. Then we press Shift-A and search for a Noise Texture. Put it here, and we select it, and press Ctrl-T. 
and we can zoom in and then we take the factor to the base and we can scale up the shading look like that can drag them over here and we want to add a color up put it here and so this would be the color for the concrete so we set this to some kind of grayish and a little bit brown maybe a little bit darker and we take this code and select the black one and paste this code so now we both have the same color but we want this one to be the same color but darker so just drag it down until we think it looks kind of okay like that great then we take the, select this noise texture and press ctrl shift d and then we have keep this connection and then we make a copy of this one shift d and we can take this factor over here and if we now press ctrl shift left click we only view what's um here and i want the scale to go up a lot this will be the gravel in the concrete great like that and i want this to be a little bit darker like that great and i want to combine these two so i press ctrl shift and right click and drag over to this one so we get a mixed node because they are mixed now and we can just drag it in over here it's already done and then we press ctrl shift left click so this is the material combined it's a bit light i think right now but we fix this and we also want to add a bump so let's search for a bump put it here and we take this factor into the height and this normal into normal and this is probably the only time i really want to go with one from the beginning because this looks like when you pour in concrete Great, but I think it looks maybe I want it to be a little more shiny because it's wet. Yeah, something like that. But we have some issues here. And uh, one issue is that if you look here, you can see nothing happening but um, the material are flowing since this is not a U map or something like that it's just static so we want to change this so if we go so if we press n we can see that okay where we both have a top and a bottom we can see okay it's around four meters high so we want to change how it flows so we go to the start and we set the location of the mapping to zero so we just press i to animate this and then when it's all poured and flowing out here we can go actually 200 and i want this value now to be maybe a bit more than four so about five meters should be okay so press i and now if we look upon it we can see that it's moving down with the flow this is one quick way how we can pour concrete and the last tip is that if you want this to settle you can just animate the strength so we just set a keyframe and then you set now the keyframe is lower because you can see here if you lower the strength it looks like the concrete is settled great and i also recommend that you um, maybe play with roughness when it settles as well it will not be a shine anymore. So this is how we animate a concrete pour. Thanks for watching. And if you like stuff like this, please like and subscribe. Bye.